Welcome back. Now, my next guest was one of ITV's most controversial stars for over a decade as one of reality TV's original Mr. Nasties. Hitting our screens with a bang in 2006 with the launch of Dancing on Ice, Australian choreographer and theatre producer Jason Garner was the judge everyone wanted to hear from. Let's look at him serving up some of his iconic one-liners. From the waist up, you're Travolta. From the waist down, it's revolting. It's olympically bad. Well, Beth, this was a great opportunity for you to show us your fun side, and unfortunately, it appears as though you don't have one. Why are you here? <laughs> the beginning had all the sensuality of a walrus on ice. If your opinion was still so important, you'd I still would be, be on the panel. The panel. But as part of ITV's woke takeover, Jason was forced to quit the show in 2019 after a series of poisonous behind-the-scenes rows, including what he calls a traumatic feud with celeb contestant Gemma Collins. Jason was doing what ITV bosses paid him to do, judge, but after The Only Way is Essex, star accused him of bullying her. He faced an onslaught of vile online abuse. And the hypocritical Be Kind Loveys piled on and ITV bosses stood by and let it happen, putting Jason in a position where his only option was to leave the show he helped to make a hit. Well, after falling victim to the cancel mob, the pandemic struck and everything changed. Struggling with his mental health during lockdown, the TV favourite made the huge decision to cast off the toxic world of showbiz and go off-grid, setting up home in a tent in Portugal and working as an eco-farmer. And I'm delighted to say he joins me now. Jason Gardner, wow, your life has completely changed. And what I find fascinating is that you say it's actually for the better, even though you're completely out of showbiz. I tell you, Dan, I mean, with everything that you said rather, you know, dramatically about what happened. Of course. Uh, what else would you expect? Behind, <laughs> I mean, I love it. It's so sort of sensational. It's fabulous. <laughs> I've missed that. Um, but the, the, the reality is, mate, I, I made decisions based on, you're quite right, my mental health. And at the time, um, we were going through the first lockdown. And if it wasn't for an amazing neighbour of mine, Jennifer, who, um, who introduced me to her allotment in Barnes, that's where my life changed because I, I started to feel grounded when I was feeling that I was on, you know, on quicksand and I was um, sinking very fast. You know, you've got to remember I've been working since I was 16 professionally and I'd never not worked. So to be in a situation where I was unable to work, I was unable to keep my company going, I was unable to do all the things that I, I believed I was born to do. It was great to then find something else that gave me a real insight into what was missing in my life. And a lot of that came down to my connection to neighbor, uh, to nature. And I know mm -hmm. you being a, a Kiwi, we, it's around us, you know, and I'd forgotten, you know, I've lived in big metropolises most of my life because that's where the entertainment industry sort of thrives. But actually it's going back to the basics where I found my true contentment because there isn't that of pressure. Course. Of, no, of, and it's of, of absolutely showbiz. fascinating the, the journey that you took in in lockdown. And of course, uh, you've got some very strong words about the government and, and the health elite as well. And I do want to come to that in one second. But okay. can we just first go back to that departure from, from ITV? Because, of course, you were one of a number of people, Jason, who were essentially kicked to the curb as this mm. broadcaster went woke essentially, and mm -hmm. embraced this woke ideology. And now, Jason, I mean, you're not here and you're away from it, but it's fascinating. The judges on their new talent shows, which, by the way, are rating uh, about one twentieth of what you used to get on Dancing on Ice at its peak, say, really, actually, the judges on talent shows, they have to be nice, Jason. They have to be nice. It would be completely wrong for a judge on a talent show to say anything critical. And I just thought that summed up uh, the be kind mentality from ITV on screen, but actually yeah. off screen, if you don't fit their agenda, they treat you like a piece of dirt, don't they? Well, look, there is no loyalty in the entertainment industry, you know, especially in television. And I learned that, you know, several times, you know, I haven't been removed off that show and brought back, you know, only once, you know, this was <laughs> this was the second time where I this has happened. And, you know, you would like to think that people learn from their mistakes, but I don't think ITV does. I think they, you know, like most things, I mean, I think terrestrial television is, is, is in a very precarious place at the moment. It doesn't really know what its future looks 
looks like. And it must be very difficult for the people that are in charge that aren't sort of keeping up with the Joneses, if you know what I'm talking about, in terms of where people are actually watching and getting their content from. And it's certainly not a lot on terrestrial TV and certainly not these programs, which I think probably supports why there's those waning figures. I think there's a waning interest in that. You know, it, it was great. It had its time. But I think, you know, if you're not going to serve up uh, authenticity on these shows, a little bit of it, you know, you don't need everybody authentic on that because, you know, not everybody can carry it. But I think these shows do rely on somebody kind of keeping it real. And it's interesting when they sort of try and uh, sugarcoat it or dumb it down, um, people lose interest. So that says more about, you know, what people really want rather than what these uh, executives think people want, which is sometimes completely out of step with the public sentiment. Indeed. And what I guess it gave you, Jason, though, was the ability to be free and to also yeah. speak freely. So as yes. the pandemic hit, you would have seen yeah. your former colleagues at ITV swallow the government line, hook, line and sinker, swallow the Ofcom mm -hmm. line, hook, line and sinker, don't criticise uh, lockdowns, don't question the vaccine rollout. But all of mm -hmm. a sudden... You had your voice on these issues and you started this new life in Portugal, uh, yes. where, as you say, you, you were completely self-sufficient and close to the black, which I find fascinating for someone who had obviously lived such a showbiz lifestyle. But yeah. you were prepared to speak out against what you considered a mainstream media narrative. Yeah. And I think, look, just to support people in my industry, because I think for a moment, you know, people are forgetting that just because people have a public pl platform, they don't have to use it in order no. to be a role model. And they certainly don't have to use it to make political statements. Right. And when they do, even if you are quoting people that are very credible, that are epidemiologists or virologists um, that have reputations, Nobel Peace Prize winners, all that kind of stuff. You are shot down as the messenger of that narrative if it doesn't stick with the MSM. And so celebrities become very big targets and you need to have a very thick skin. Now, I've got probably rhinoceros <laughs> thick skin after what You've I've developed been that over the years. I've developed it. You know, I don't. And, and you're right. Right now, I am in such a more liberated place. I'm, I'm not. It doesn't depend on whether or not I stay with ITV, a family viewing show based on what I say, how many followers I have. It's exhausting. People don't understand the pressure that is on a lot of people to really, you know, play into the brand. You know, it's all about protecting yeah. brands. And that's fine. But at the end of the day, there comes a decision that you have you have to take, do I protect a brand that isn't loyal to me or do I protect my mental health? And so you decided, I'm going to speak so out. I decided that, you know, on, on things that matter to me, and look, I, I'm sure you're privy to this. I get messaged a lot by people that are reaching out who are really struggling, who are really suffering because of mandates, regulations, but also things that were imposed upon people, people that stepped up and did the right thing, who have been injured, who have lost loved ones, who are now living with chronic medical health conditions, but nobody's allowed to give them a voice. They're being silenced within the medical profession. It's like it's it. I, I can't understand it. it. We understand it's a trial, but we should be more transparent about what is happening. And as because it's a trial, we're not saying they got everything wrong, but we have to acknowledge that these there are people that are injured and they are sustaining, you know, some horrific life changing um, conditions like myocarditis, pericarditis. These aren't mild people. Do you know what I mean? These are this this changes your life for the rest of your life. And I think it's 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 doing them a disservice and disrespectful that these people did the right thing and people are not giving them a platform and a voice to so, say we exist. No, I completely understand that. And that's one of the reasons why I hosted uh, Christopher Chope recently, who is Thank really you. the only MP in yes. all of the UK okay. who is actually demanding an inquiry into vaccine damage. So Absolutely. what and they you're tried saying, to ridicule it. yeah, the, the, of course they did. I, I, that yeah. was completely revolting. But but so what Awful. you're saying, Jason, is there should just be a free debate. You want to put it all on the table. You want people to be able to say what happened to them. Whereas if you look at the mainstream broadcasters, the BBC, ITV, Sky News, they don't do that. 
But isn't this how science advances through mm-hmm. debate, through looking at implement things that were implemented? Because what we knew back then to what we know now is completely different. So applying the science has to change with what we know. But if we are suppressing information like the amount of people that are actually um, being affected and because, you know, the nine page adverse side uh, effects that were released after the rollout because a Texan judge ruled it, that Pfizer had to release that. It's nine pages long. You know, this is not a a short read. There's nine pages worth of very serious effects, but nobody's allowed to sort of talk about it or linking it. And it's very interesting on, on the footy program in Australia, which is massive, you know, the Sunday footy program, they started talking about for the first time on the panel, which is groundbreaking for that TV show to do this. But they waged in on it and said, what is going on with our players and why are they falling like flies? Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. It was a fascinating That's powerful. No, it is. And look, I'm happy. It's difficult to do, believe me, in this country. But I think it's really important that here on GB News we have the discussion and we hear from both sides and we hear from people who have been personally affected. But, Jason, it's so lovely to speak to you because... It's great to be, I think, for you to have your voice back and to be talking about these important issues. And I know, obviously, lots of people love hearing it on your social media. So congratulations, Jason. Thank you so much, Dan. And I I applaud you for giving this platform to people. Thank you. Thank you. That was the former Dancing on Ice judge, Jason Gardner.